Young Gunners, Mandy, they take on Elevate. And, I mean, Elevate's a wounded beast right now. Yeah, they absolutely are. I think Elevate look pretty rocky, I think it's fair to say, after last night's 0-7 uh, to Fury. Speakeasy actually went and tweeted, Good morning, everyone. I dreamt I got 7 0 Ha ha, silly dream. Mate, it was not a dream. You did get 7 0 by Fury yesterday. And now they're going up against Daystar. I, yeah, I feel like for these guys, this is just an opportunity here to recompose, really. Yesterday was a bit of a shocker, but hopefully today they can rectify that. Definitely a shock to the system, Dev. There's no two ways about it. But we know that this roster is capable of so much more and so much better. I mean, this is the game that they really would want to be bouncing back on. Yes, very much. And good news for Elevate. The last time they played Daystar, they actually 7 0 them on Oregon. Wow. That was way back in September when Daystar was called APR. But hey, I'm looking for storylines here, Rob. And so you got to take whatever I've put down. Uh, Elevate, obviously, there's been no better opportunity to get back on the horse than this game right here. And no better chance uh, when you're playing a game like, uh, like this one against Daystar, who really should be the underdogs in this matchup. No, absolutely. Daystar have been a roster that unfortunately just have not been able to do enough in the league so far. Uh, but I still have beliefs. I still look at this roster and I still think that there is an element to them of... I, I'm going to say fieriness, of aggressiveness. And look, whether that's going to translate or not, I feel like their attacks just haven't been up to the par, Dev. Do you think that that could potentially be something that turns around? Yeah, potentially. Uh, it does depend on the map as well. Like, looking historically at some of their data, like, they really struggle on attack on specific maps. For example, Border and Chalet, 27 and 25% attack win rate. Whereas you look at, like, a bank, they got 83% attack win rate. So it really, yeah. And they're actually undefeated on bank the last three times they played it. So it really depends on the map that where we end up going to, which I know is, of course, uh, jumping on that a little bit prematurely. But for now, just focusing on the rosters. Uh, obviously, Daystar have also played with subs before as well. I, I think it was Momo Rins who didn't end up playing. Was that yesterday? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's right. And so we've seen subs work in favorite teams. We've seen it work against them. Uh, and yeah, I just hope that we get the full rosters for both teams this game. Yeah, that's all that we can say because both teams are going to need that. You, you really can't underestimate the... Uh, the impact a sub can have and look we're, we're all hopeful to see this one follow through in full fruition let's go ahead and have a look at the map vetoes and uh, I, I do hope that if this discussion turns the way i think it will that we do stick away from a border or a chalet for day stars hope there uh that attack win rate is uh, is a little bit scary oh, border's, border's gone but we all know chalet. where we're going man day star ban chalet right now not again don't no. go to chalet again you've done it again you did it again, Daystar! You've gone twice to Chalet and you've lost both times! It's Go not gonna them. be It's not gonna be easier because you're playing Elevate. You lost this to Direwolves, you lost this to Jalita. It's not I mean I'll, okay, let's have a look at what, what Elevate. Well Elevate haven't played it since they got the new roster, so pfft. I don't know. Uh yeah. <laughs> That's my thought, Mandy. <laughs> That is my thought, Mandy. <laughs> one of those ones. What hope is there, Mandy? What hope is there for Daystar um, in this one? Honestly, the hope is that Elevate looks a bit like, hey, how you going yesterday, right? I feel like if Elevate have not fixed up whatever's gone on about 24 hours ago, then look, you know, Daystar could steal away some rounds. I mean, you know, we interviewed Jalita yesterday after they beat them 7-1, and they said they were pretty surprised that they beat them 7-1. They thought they were better than a 7-1, at least referring to Daystar, of course. So, like, honestly, like, look, if they're on the ball today, you never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. You always have to stay hopeful. Uh, it is time for us to get underway. I was going to try and think of, like, some cool little segue, you know, be really, really fancy with it. But, I mean, the two we're going to aren't all that fancy. No, we're not. I mean, I don't think we ever claim to be, though, Gus, to be fair. Whereas uh, a lot of the times, Rob. We talk about video games as a full time job. We talk about video games as a full time job. I mean. Yeah. And I will say Rob is actually a male model. I, I, I can't lie. Is he? Can't lie. Yeah, I, he is. Uh, big game coming up, though, for Daystar. They do head to Chalet once again. Was your reaction to the map veto the same as James? No. No. Because I don't know the stats. Oh. Oh, As you don't know the stats. Dev just said in my ear. No, no, no. I, I did raise an eyebrow. I didn't probably... Uh, I wasn't quite as animated. But certainly raised an eyebrow. And this is a... 
Uh, this has the potential to be a funny old game. I just don't know what to expect, especially from what we saw from Elevate, especially last night. It was way, 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 way off the mark. So maybe Daystar can pull off something special here, but going to Shallow was certainly uh, not an expectation that we had for this matchup. All right, well, they start uh, looking for redemption after yesterday's 7 1 shellacking at the hands of Jalita on this very map. So the bar is quite low when it does come to Daystar here on Chalet. They are looking to at least get more than one. That has to be the goal. Elevate. I mean, they too looking for redemption. Losing yesterday's 7 0 to Fury, not on this particular map. And as James alluded to, they have not played Chalet so far in this particular stage. I don't know if it's. Not necessarily been one that they care whether or not they could do. Definitely, they can't get too much since they have allowed it through here in this game. Now, on the defense to begin, 59% defensive win rate on Chalet. Expecting Elevate to do well early on. But it does come to Daystar, though. Uh, yesterday, it was just the one attacking round. They do begin on the attack, so we'll see if they can improve upon that one round. Well, surprise, surprise, it's the Ying Monty combo taken down on the attack. So these teams will stick to, you know, what has become a pretty concrete meta at this point on the attack. Defensively, we do see a little bit of a switch up with the Kaid taken down this time around. will alleviate some of the pressure when it comes to opening up walls. And the Solos also off the board. So Elevate defensively are not going to be, be relying on the Solos to gain information and also to deny it. And we'll see if they start are able to lean into that with things like pre-placed drones and perhaps maybe some of their uh, operator selections as well. But yeah, again, e quite eager to jump into this game. I, I hope for elevate stake, they do bounce back. They know that yesterday was just not acceptable, but they also should find solace in the fact that it's a best of one league format. And so they can bounce back today and sort of shrug that off pretty quickly. A general consensus for this game is that Defense elevate definitely the favorite of the two teams. Yeah. Their result yesterday was yeah, largely unexpected, the nature of that result being a 7-0 capitulation they couldn't really get anything going uh, found no real success inside of the server and as for daystar yeah i mean i guess similar kind of storyline i mean there's not much of a difference between 7-0 and 7-1 oh. this is what rank looks like at 4 a.m when you're sleep deprived but it's better now a big result here as well. Elevate need to probably get this win. You know, you, you've lost to Fury now, so no longer a spotless record. They did beat Jalita back on play day two. Just need to keep the points ticking over. Daystar. For them, it's a matter of can you avoid bottom two? That's got to be the goal. Can you beat the two South Asia teams? A result here against Elevate would be quite shocking, but would also be so amazing. Hijack gets an opening kill. Want to speak easy and see from Elevate's perspective, wanting to hey, yeah, challenge it? these kind of spawn picks. I'm imagining big window in games. Or was it above? Surely it was nah. games there, the mirror. Yeah, games were, yeah, games at the window. Yeah, Tucked into the corner, looking for spawn pick. Yeah. We saw another spawn pick up above that yeah, didn't see anyone, but for Elevate, it does not work out. Looking for a little bit of aggression at those windows. They start switched on. I mean, again, that could be the uh, approach here, Elevate early on, at least if, if they can test the waters and bully Daystar out of the match. I don't think that's a particularly bad idea. Doesn't quite work out, though, for the first engagement in round number one, though. And so Daystar now with the advantage, we'll see if they can convert it. With their composition, they shouldn't have too many issues in clearing this mezzanine position. There will be pressure, though, on Neon on that floor is to get those Roteros to work. Good info inside of Dining. And the Nook could go for a bit of a lurk here and then pinch through horizontally. Pretty self-proficient. Flicking drones themselves, KZB. Shed needs to be really, really careful here. I mean, KZB's lurk here looks pretty good. 90 seconds, push up West Main. Shed's watching, but not watching the right angle. KZB's going to get the kill. Oh, no, he's not. He flicked over. Well, Elevate have probably done enough in this round. Neon now the solo. I really don't know how KZB wasn't able to get that kill. Oh, nice little flick from Neon, but not good enough. And Enhike is going to get the final kill of the round. And the fact that he's getting shot in the back and he still did a, a pretty decent job in a, in a 180 flick behind him, bot library, and did a little bit of damage. You know, strange old opening round. Elevate will be more than happy, though, after losing a player to the opening spawn peak. And we go down to basement for the second round. <laughs> and you can see the Elevate players, they're playing up to the cameras a little bit. 
again yesterday against Fury, it was a 0-7 loss. So that's now the first round one of the week. Ooh. And it comes off the back of losing the early engagements are good from them. Attack Pretty critical that Shed did win that fight over towards West Main. Probably a little bit unlucky for KZB in terms of the timing and the angle, but even despite that elevate winning every single one elsewhere in the meantime, as the rest of the push came through. So good work in withstanding that pressure. Down to basement for round number two. Two morale for sight denial in combination with the bandit. Keeping in mind again that Kaid is banned out, so bandit will be pretty important for that combination if defensive teams want to run it. And we will also see the vigil employed on the roam with that boss chief, which seems to be getting far too much playtime for my liking here in Asia, but it can be impactful provided Arpe is sharp on his shots and he's getting support from the rest of the team. They're going to go for this again. Boss Chi from Ape. Another spawn peak opportunity for Alivate on the defense. And pop goes the weasel. So much easier when you get the kill. Yeah, so much better. <laughs> Shared with the exclamation mark. It's Cotley that gets illuminated. There goes the ram. So you lose a lot of that soft breach. Especially on a basement site where you want to probably get into that main entrance. Open up with the Boogie Auto breaches. Or even top four looking down below. Either way. Not going to have it. No ram. And the boss sheet has become quite prominent. Main breach looking to get opened up will be pretty comfortable, you would imagine. The secondary EMP into the exothermic charge. Although, the tomb out plus the bandit can yeah, make this a little bit tricky here for, for Daystar. Yeah, no nades for the attack to nade through that drone hole to find the Zato canister and or the bandit batteries. Or even the bandit themselves. That's going to stay locked. Until they get vert pressure for it, which again is challenging because the best vertical player on the team is in the <laughs> guy is dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just falling apart at the seams for day start. Their first plan and second plan are basically in the bin. What's the third plan? Probably roam around, drone out, find kills, hunt down this vigil, make it a four and four, then hit site. That might be their best avenue to winning this round. Player on the repel out solo and over towards Ego Belk to maybe get position into office. They're trying their hardest to drone out Arpe. You can see the amount of drone work from Daystar to try and flush out this position. They've got a repel on solo, so Arpe can't really go into solo. If he does, he probably dies. They've actually done a decent job, and Neon, though, caught in the back. And High Carl has actually come to help out. But Arpe, who would have been calling the pinch, Remember, we're able to get that kill onto and Haikal, and Ape is now trapped over in towards the closet. But up close, he is going to be very difficult. Lovely double swing, and KZB gets the headshot. I tell you what, for a, th a plan B into plan C, the plan C is looking better. Three versus three, 60 seconds lot left. Decent job in clearing out the vigil. Now you can hit sight. You've got the Grim, you've got the Hive Launcher. You can certainly get some good information. Yeah, relatively well played. Uh, One case though. Yeah, the solid util here from the defense is going to make this tricky, right? The goo mines are deployed, assuming they're in this, uh, you know, wine cellar yeah. direction. That's going to be tough to deal with. Plus, double Zoto canister as well from MC. He can drop those down and make this sink on the push really challenging by slowing down the attack. So, job far from done here from Daystar. We'll see, though, with 25 seconds, if somebody can step up and make a big play. Yeah, I mean, the time, though, you've got to go a little quicker than this. Get into this attacking play earlier. Looks like it might be double drop hatch off the back of the flashes. Hijack's got one more. They expended. Drop down. Can't hit an initial shot if anyone was going to be peeking towards blue. Good mine's going to further slow him down. And the nitrous cell, well, it doesn't quite hit. And Hijack has to stick it or try and save KD. He did neither. And Elevate will get their second round. Yeah, the late round util there from Elevate and the positioning was absolutely spot on. With only one Grim Launcher to dislodge Pillar, that defender could alleviate that spot. They just had to then be really careful of the blue lurk and anything potentially down fireplace as well, which they were. So, yeah, solid work there. They start through the mid round, did a good job in recovering from here. Minute 20, 3 versus 5. And they then took another 20 seconds to deal with the two re remaining defenders up above, Arpe and Heikel. Unfortunately, though, late round going to be tough. Still an exothermic in the pocket that ultimately would have liked to have used that elsewhere for some pressure. Even if it was just perceived or phantom pressure at that point, but ultimately not meant to be with that bandit two-brow combo. So really well played by Elevator overall. They start just lacking that extra gear for the attack, but they found themselves in a pretty tricky position. Yeah, very early tactical timeout taken from Daystar. Not happy with the performance to start. 
I mean, who would have seen this coming? Chalet might be not the map for you guys. I don't know. Maybe it could be the fact that this is the third attempt and the third failure. I mean, we're only two rounds in, but not seeing enough to suggest that this is a map that they should be going back to for the third time. I very much agree with James on the desk, only this map veto kind of came through. Kind of wanted to see them go somewhere else, try something else. Still plenty of rounds in this half. By no means is hope lost, and to their credit, even after losing the ram and not able to get main breach, they still kind of made that last basement round yeah, uh, possible towards the end. Good little roam clear up above. If they can emulate that kind of work, then yeah, maybe they can find a couple of attacking rounds. But Alibate, once again, looking to just kind of lock down these positions. The tube round employed once again in the hands of MC. Coupled with the Azami, the Mute, the Castle. It's all about on-site defense here. Kitchen and dining up above. Vert hold. Reinforce off and make this impenetrable. Yeah, they start going to play up above. I presume the gridlock in play. That's a bit of an intriguing setup. We don't often see Kitchen fully reinforced off the trophy. Typically, teams will have a line of sight to make the vault in a little bit more tricky. So there must be some kind of system that Elevate have in place to make trophy more difficult to enter. Or perhaps they're willing to forfeit that control even and give it away to the uh, the attack. I know they've got that line of sight west main, which we're watching now, but it's the trophy window itself. Unless they've got bird up above, or again, they're happy to forfeit it. Um, and, and lean into the castle barricade that's set up. They still going to drone this, so we'll see if they exploit this. This is going to be a really intriguing part of the round. If, if they want to play into this, or they sense that it's a bit of a trap that elevator set. Oh. Oh. You don't take first oh. shot. Oh, oh, oh my god. Maybe second shot. Now you go. There we go. <laughs> well, good trick and discipline from Omer, and you take the first shot there as he's moving around. And arguably, I think, speak easy, would have survived. Instead, patience is a virtue. Does get the kill. Drone hole is impactful. As you alluded to. E1D plus the Adrenal Surge says it's time to enter the building. But a Nitrosol from MC will make that difficult. Into dining though for KZB. As Cortley's going to lose his life. There is the trade that eventually comes through. And with that, a bit of sight control for Daystar. The question is though, who's got the kit and where is it? That's a phenomenal question. I have no idea where that diffuser is being put to rest. And elevate they... capitalize. It's not it's outside, outside, is it? Oh, it's outside think... trophy. Yeah. Is it outside trophy? And they've just left it as he's gone in on the entry. I think it was Momorin who was the one that probably should have brought it in with him. They've got, they had full site control. I mean, KCP is still inside of dining. But they left the biggest piece of utility that is required in this game. Showing there for KZB. Of course, you can shoot down the keeper barrier now. And the LMG with its extended magazine means that he can spray that down. Adrenal surge activated as well. Full health for KZB. In that moment, could have taken the time to vault out the trophy window, grab kit. But now he's locked himself into finding these last two players. And with little time, that becomes even more difficult. Well, the nades come through to create a bit of space. He senses correctly that these defenders are above but elevate will peel off bro you gotta go quicker now uh, you you've opted into this you've got to pick up the pace well one close got to force this and in fact an opportunity yellow ping he knows where they both are but he couldn't hit the initial shot he knew the one was close and then high cal will get the final kill oh that was a strange old round great opening kill through the drone hole the entry to site was swift and precise but they forgot one big important thing. Well, we laid it out early in the round. The fact that Trophy was fully reinforced off, they started identified it. They then wanted to try and exploit it. And they did in terms of, you know, positionally. They just forgot the big win condition, which everyone memes on that no one plants in ranked. Well, you have to have the diffuser with you if you want to be able to get it down. And ultimately it was just left outside. Attackers need to locate you know the interesting thing about it though, right? In that instance, you're attacking a site, which is a vert hold site, kitchen dining, but you play up above, etc. If you are able to even get into that position where you're able to get the plant down quick, you can then play the post plant. You don't even have to worry about the vert. The fact they got site control, caught elevate off guard, 
They would have got plant down. Then it's a post plant retake. And then you can start sending players through trophy, for example, and flank up above if you want. Library hallway. A lot of avenues to the round. Now, Momarin has it to his left. Yeah. Never brings it in with him when they do make that entry. KCB does his best in a 1v3, but yeah, I, I think even in that moment, 50 seconds left, if he gets that kill, should he not just go out trophy window, grab kit, and at least give yourself a plant opportunity if you need it? Mm. It's better than I trying mean, to go hunting with 20 seconds left. I, I mean, the round, the round was lost by the 1v3 anyway. Yeah, to be fair, he nearly actually did win it in the 1v2 through Dining Hall. It actually got a little bit sketchy there for Elevate for a moment, but... They hold on. It's perfect rotation. Three rounds for the defense. Back to back to back. Can't really ask for much better. See if they start, though, can produce a response. We go back to the primary side of bedroom. Capital in play for the execute. Well, my though in play, so magnets to counter. And on the topic of counters, we are going to see KZB spot out this mirror set up down below. And he'll be quite eager to get an Ash Charge onto that, which he does right now. So that uh, mirror window, I can only assume, has been cleared below. Don't know exactly who's actually playing on the mirror window, but... Nonetheless, should be a position that's now weakened. I remember that attack. Uh, again, has been quite good for Day Start early on, getting these opening kills. I catch 22 though, I mean KZB low, so it was a little bit to Neon, but... I mean, it's been an intriguing half. I, they've not been short of finding opening kills. Follow-up is where the questions have probably... Well, laid the most for Daystar. As it in the moment now on Shed. 5 and O. Perfect start so far, takes out another drone. Not too many have been taken out so far. I think it's very much the site execution for Daystar that's probably leaving a little bit to be desired right now through this game on Chalet. A decent amount of pressure on the solar side. And we'll offer some bedroom. 60 seconds left though. It's all about compounding the advantage that they've got. Five versus four. You've got the numbers. You can now start to trade positions. You can overwhelm something, say like a bathroom. Two players go in, maybe only one comes out. There's still a win. Memory in through the library, very late here on the flank. We're on the push at this point. There was one play of it towards Mezzanine earlier, but yeah, this is a very slow paced attack from Daystar. Oh, good swing. Headshot found from Neon. Now you got to go off of this. Yeah, lovely, lovely push. Well, in the end, I guess a slow paced attack has been a bit better for Daystar. Down to Shed. 6 0. The KD is very much about to get ruined by Neon outside of the balcony still. Okay, they didn't rush anything. And in the end, rewarded. And they get themselves their opening attack round of the half. Yeah, they kept it very simple there with the solar smokes and then both double window bathroom cross being held. That weakens bathroom, it weakens the cross back from piano. And then with the sweep in late from Momo on the Twitch, didn't leave Elevator many opportunities to make a play. So some pretty solid work there from the attack. Quite well measured and calculated, not overcomplicating things and risking it go astray. Really good shot there from Neon. Could make the argument that the dry swing there was a 50-50 fight, and if he loses that, it would have been quite challenging, I think, for the rest of the uh, defense to be unlocked, but back himself in on the fight, and sometimes 50-50s like that can be the big difference maker. Only managed the one attacking round. Last time out here on Shallow for day start. Yesterday against Jolita. It was a 5-1 half. Two more rounds to go. Will that be replicated here in this match? Elevate already able to, you know, offset their 07 loss yesterday at the hands of Fury. Now with a decent first half. Looked good. Haven't really made that many mistakes. Arguably just losing a lot of their contact fights in that last round. And Daystar just a bit better in the sheer gunplay. They've done a good job, actually, Daystar, of getting these opening kills. Despite the fact that Elevate themselves have... Uh, for the most part, been looking to seek them out with the spawn kills, as in high kills, gets a pretty free headshot onto Neon, pretty big, gets rid of the Flores. No Rotero drones for this fifth round, and again, another spawn peak from Elevate. It's gone back and forth, there's certainly been some moments, you know, saw the boss G out on the solar side peak earlier, the opening round though, went the way of Daystar, it's been pretty 50-50.
on these shallow spawn pings. So with that Flores taken down, that's going to bolster this defensive setup pretty significantly, most notably that as army now will be more challenging to clear. We haven't seen a lot of teams opt towards shooting down those barricades. They're pretty fringe cases. Team's still leaning heavily into explosives, so expect that to be pretty limited for Daystar. And the flow and effect of that plus the deployable shields means that this top floor hold from Elevate is going to be a real, real challenge to clear. There's a horizontal extension as well through to Kitchen. Arpe lurking down below. There's a lot of different elements to this defense for Daystar to try and break down. It's still possible, especially with the likes of KZB up on the nook to be able to lurk around and maybe find something for free, but... I do fear for Daystar, halfway through the round, they haven't been able to get a whole lot of fun yet. Oh, and the frost map. Got this down. Does get brought back up. Hijack was close by. And does give Daystar an advantage now with over a minute remaining. Certainly in a good position to maybe find their second round win in a row and would be already doubling up from yesterday. Flash in front of Enhaikel, doesn't look away. Over towards big window and already planting at the half wall. Kotli, that's so aggressive. Without a real clear angle being held by Hijack, at least gets the kill. Two versus two, Kit already at the half wall position. Okay, aware of that. Default still up as well, top library. Ape doesn't really need to play this position, but I imagine he would have been spotted. Momorant. Trying to just lurk push in. KZB while well, he lands the shot, then eventually gets rid of that default. Tries to play off the red ping, but speak easy. Already in a good position. Elevate, make it four. Sloppy round, but salvaged. And now with one round to go in the half, looking to emulate what was done against Daystar yesterday by Jalita and go 5-1 up in the half. Yeah, we saw yesterday defensively over on Consular, Elevate were consistently having their roamers getting caught in pinches and unfavorable fights. We haven't really seen Daystar do that today. They haven't been in those, you know, similar positions. Um, the Spawn Peaks as well have been throwing a bit of a spanner in the works, making things challenging, especially if they're losing that early engagement. We're seeing them very quickly then pivot into Lurks. Horizontal sweeps, not wanting to play the util game, and I guess understandably so, at least in the last round the floor is dead, but... Yeah, it made it very, very difficult. Fell in an attempt to try and direct hit sight in the end, and if it wasn't for the 1-1 trade double window, maybe it actually could have gone down, but... Again, much like a couple of the rounds so far in the half, very 50-50 gunfights. Um, in that case, uh, very much 50-50, dictating the result of the round in the end. Yeah, Alabama yeah, certainly been the better team. Daystar, though, not through lack of trying, have still got themselves in a position where if they can win here on basement. Snow one, final round of the half, go to 2 4. And statistically, in this region, it's fine in terms of an attacking performance. As long as they don't lose anyone here on the initial spawn, Elevate have been peaking these windows. To be fair, to credit Daystar, they've done well in dealing with some of these picks. A bit of information there due to that default. No one spotted, but also means a bit more, more of an idea as to where the attack's going to come from. Last time out, they were unable to get the main breach opened up, so to canister to delay the exothermic. And then a shot as well, because then the just peeked over. And it might just about clean all of them up at this point. My goodness. Damage done. You lose the exothermic charge now because of the thermite being eliminated. And so suddenly... This main breach, I mean, there's only... You've got, you've got secondaries. You've got four of them, but... I don't see a world in which this gets opened up. Going to have to revert now to plan B and head into the building, clear out these roamers, if there are any, and hope for the best. Yeah, really well time jump out as the uh, attack tries to process attack. what's happening on the breach. Stuck looking at that, not expecting the jump out. More time to more played. I think in future, we do need to see the uh, explosive counter, though, through the drone hole a frag grenade and just make it a little bit more tricky for the defense to deal with the hard breach on the wall. Something for future thought. Momo this time on the nook. He's the one to sneak into an advanced position over towards Trench. Ooh, almost lined up. Nearly. Spots the knee of the lesion, but doesn't land much. Three versus four. 
An important round for Daystar to win here, but unfortunately at the moment, it does look tricky. They still have the secondary hard reach available, so if they can get some control up above and get the hatches to work, maybe, and then five launches from the Grim to dislodge. But in the face of, once again, such strong defensive utility in the Goo Mines, the Zoto Canisters, information on Valkan's potential on site, yeah, it's probably going to be uh, a challenge too far gone for Daystar. Looking for this default plan. 40 seconds to try and get quite a lot of work done, and they're going to rotate over. Maybe look to open up a boiler, boiler wall as well. Not with the battery. It is available if you want to bring the secondary hard breach. At well, least going for a big rotate here. Hit in the hands of Momorant. Not a lot of time. Secondary hard breach over towards Boiler to open up. Does give them an extra avenue of attack. With that doff. The Grim Hive Launcher isn't enough to give them the free kill. Despite that red ping information, Speakeasy has played the wall really well. You can see the jiggle peeking here is perfect from Speakeasy. A bit of really solid mechanics from a player with so much skill and professionalism and has been around the block a long time. Understanding there's not a lot of time there. It doesn't need to over peek. Just jiggles. Good spray control. 5-1. And it all started here from Enheit Kel. Pretty easy vault out. And these are the kind of things that Honestly, top teams should be mindful of, and for Daystar, I just think they got caught really half asleep. So 5-1 half then for Elevate. Today is far, uh, is going far better than yesterday. Far more closer to the game plan, I presume. On attack, we'll see if they have any teething issues, but they have such a big lead now that it's difficult to foresee them losing this match. Fully expect them to walk away with at least the tertiary sites, which will be enough in this instance. So we'll see what they bring to the table, but in terms of this initial lineup, it is pretty much the most vanilla basic lineup you can bring in Siege. Maybe IQ as the flex is a bit intriguing, but that's in response to the Valkyrie, which saw quite a bit of play in the first half. And so Elevate very much giving the indication that they'll go slow, steady, and rely on fundamentals, which is the ultimate edge that they should have in this match, anyway. Yeah, against your leader, Daystar were unable to get any defensive rounds, eventually losing this 7-1. Let's see if they can go a little bit better here. It is Chalet, yes, but defense has done quite well in this map so far already even today, let alone yesterday. And they start with a decent looking lineup. Ampe straight over towards Jigsaw Belt. It's going to pop down this Claymore and get to work. I would imagine on either one of these windows, maybe a bit of both. Or it just leaves it there for the time being. Someone will come back and play the balconies later outside of bathroom and piano. Gets onto the rappel. You know, large emphasis already here from Elevators to where they kind of want to attack from. And their pressure. Speak easy over towards Ego. He's got Kit. Something to keep in mind. So some early oh, impacts no. there from N. Heichel. And it is the Claymore to get the kill, baiting him out. Ape, speak easy. Also on the kill feed. They're ready in. Oh, that's so clean. Lovely little battle around Piano behind the Keeper Barrier and the pace from Elevate just rapid. KZB trying to find an angle there on the pixel through Trophy yeah, Stairs, unable to do so. The plant is already successful. This hole down below completely ignored. Lovely shot onto Ape, clean from KZB. As clean as that is, though, the defense up above was not clean at all. And Elevate breaking straight through. They'll go up 6-1. I don't know where KCB's going. You can't save. <laughs> it does have a frost map. Maybe it'll carry over to the next round. <laughs> <laughs> no economy in Siege. Disappointing defensively there from Daystar up above. First pick off the back of the Claymore. Every other position then very quickly dislodged. Elevate sense that was the trigger point in the round to go for the push and they made it work. And I think the one fight that probably really encapsulated how rough things were for Daystar was that fight in piano, even with the Keeper Barrier standing. Still losing it out. So unfortunate there for their first defensive effort on the primary site. Nothing goes to plan. And Elevate now on match point. Yeah, hard to imagine there's much of a comeback possibility for Daystar. If 
that round encapsulated by the pace of Elevate in comparison to what we saw in the opening half. Quick, not just in their approach in the site guns, but also their setup. Like how quickly they were able to get over to Bell, get the double Claymores down. I believe the other, I think the Claymore that actually got set off must have been the solar run out. I don't actually think it was the balcony ones. I think it, yeah, it was either it's, solar or true. Yeah, because Ape was the one who plays the balcony ones. Either way, again, highlighting just how quick they were able to get there, get those down, put the pressure on, and then straight in towards piano, straight in towards site. There was about a minute and 40 or so on the clock. So Elevate just from the get-go, everything they did structured, but also nicely paced. They started just fell apart, unfortunately. And I think they tried to do something down below. Clearly didn't work. We go to bar games though. We'll see if they start can at least find a second round. I'd like to see them get a second round, guys, just for the sake of not having the exact same results as yesterday, which would prove James Dev, Marta Stewart, very much correct in terms of the map choice. Ugh. What the hell was that? Previous lineup. <laughs> Welcome to 2024 Siege, mate. Although the fact that it got shot was pretty crazy. <laughs> Straight, like, very quickly, too. <laughs> oh, that's what I was talking about. Just how quick that got shot out of the air. That's... That was... Just... As soon as that reached its, its peak, it was just already gone. Opening kill, by the way, did go to Daystar anyway. Safe losing his life. Okay, well, I, I guess a little bit of that pacing for Alibate will get stalled out now. I don't know if they're going to double or triple down. Ibavari is shot out by Anaheim Cup. Yeah, well, they have the LMG to counter the Kiba Barriers from the Azami. They also have the Kappa Tau if they want to flame or smoke Mez. Big Easy will position himself over towards Ego Belt to try and help out. Gets gifted one by KZB. And now there's a lot of pressure here on Neon to step up. Oh, little pop up from Cotley. And Henhai Cal was already in place. Goo Mine and Razor Bloom. But doesn't matter. Straight back out. MC straight to the half wall. It's all for naught in terms of the utility set up by Daystar. But it is a three on three with that kill on to Shed. Oh. Just as that logic bomb was ringing and hijack up above. And very much delayed his plant from going down. And MC's already moved into bar stock. Minute 20. And still every chance for Elevate to kind of change the way that they want to approach the conclusion of this round. I think they're going to play off of Speak Easy instead of playing off of Van Heikel. That big window, plant successful. Hijack probably a little bit confused right now. And MC immediately as he gets off of that plant, gets the kill on to Hijack. Neon does get the down. Two versus two. Speak Easy in a bit of an off angle position. And an easy final kill from N Heikel onto Neon. GG's in chat. 7 1 yesterday on Chalet. Unfortunately for Daystar, they were the one. So then one today on Chalet. Unfortunately for Daystar, they are the one. They can't find a win here on this map. Time to try something else for Daystar. It's not looking great for this stage of Asia League. So far, their only win coming against one of the South Asia teams that we've got in this league. Another beatdown at the hands of an SCA team. But good news for Elevate. The response that they absolutely needed to have today comes through very quickly. 7-1. They got 0-7 yesterday on Consulate. Massive turnaround. You can argue their opponent all you like, but they looked clean, concise. This is the Elevate I expected a bit more of yesterday. Yeah, I mean, Elevate's fundamentals were completely out of the window yesterday, but they're very much back in the picture today. So good work from them. They kept it clean. They kept it simple. And honestly, they looked far better. So good work from Elevate. And as you can see, quite pleased with that result. You might be the prediction king, guys, but in this instance, James Dev, Marta Stewart's frustrations in the map veto have come to fruition. He was right. And unfortunately for Daystar, they were wrong. They were, and that now leaves them in a very, very poor predicament, Dev. I mean, Chalet, it is not their map. Yep. Every now and then you see a team that really love playing a map. Maybe they farm it in scrims. Maybe they've spent 20 hours stratting and dry running. But the results do speak for themselves. And this is uh, the third blunder for Daystar now on Chalet. And what's more, every time you play a map, it gives the chance for your opposition to vote it and figure out how you play it and the best way to play against you. So I would be very disappointed if Daystar continue playing Chalet at this point. It's not only the fact that, yeah, they're, they're maybe not great at it or not as good as they think they are at it, but also it's just going to be so easy to vote them now. So yeah, back to the drawing board for them really sucks to, to have a game go this way. But for Elevate, it's exactly like we were saying in the, the pre-match desk. 
they really have bounced back into form. And we often see that from teams when they get smashed the next play day. It's a huge wake-up call and they get back into it. Yeah, Elevate obviously come out of this, Mandy, with probably maybe the biggest takeaway that we've we've had so far in the Asia League. You know, giving that warning shot yesterday, it's the time to do it, right? Day three in the Asia League, you've still got plenty of time before we even head to playoffs. What does this mean for Elevate moving forward? That is a good question. Um, I think for these guys, yeah, it's just to keep up the form from here on out, really. I think they've probably secured themselves like good enough form to at least be in the playoffs. Um, I guess with their blunders, it's pretty hard to be eyeing for that one, two seed now, especially with Bleed doing so well and the, the middle pack being so tightly contested. They could still try and go for two, I think, realistically, in, in their position that they're in right now. Yeah. But I think really it's, it's just, you know, riding the wave out to the playoffs from here on out keeping in good form, don't get burnt out, I think they'll be fine. I think uh, one of the biggest takeaways for me, Dev, was looking at the player cams throughout that uh, entire game from Elevate's perspective. It's very clear they came in today with a very, very specific vision. Yeah, yeah, you really saw that energy rise up uh, and they absolutely needed that. It's similar to what we talked to Lycolis about. He knew that it was going to be a tough game because they were playing with a sub, so the entire team got more animated to try and compensate for that. I think we saw that with Elevate compensating for their loss yesterday. Uh, I think it was Shed at the very end there. He was like, got up and he was like, punching his camera or something like that. So <laughs> I, I, it's kind of, yeah, the kind of energy I love seeing. Uh, and yeah, Elevate, I think they know exactly what they need to do to get back on that horse. I think they've done it. It's just about keeping that consistent form because there are a lot of really tough games to go. And as you said, the priority for Elevate should be top two spots. And I think that is incredibly achievable. I actually at the moment think that Elevate are probably the favorite team for that second seed just since Fury had a bit of a slow start, but Fury will be coming for them. Now, Mandy, this might be a uh, bit of a tough question. I might be throwing you under the bus a little bit here. All right. But uh, what's the what's the takeaway for uh, for Daystar in this one? You know, it's it, you've got to try to take the the good with the bad and the bad with the good. But what 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 is your takeaway? I think the takeaway for Daystar for me is that they need to go back and try new things. I think is the big one. Um, you know, consistently going back to Chalet over and over and over again, when you know that you're not probably not going to be in contention for the top spots, maybe trying to make playoffs here, to me, isn't really a good way to be practicing or progressing. I think for them, looking at progression and just staying process focused, I think is the main thing that I would be um, pushing forward for that team, I think at that point. And I think that going into your officials day after day, doing the same things over and over again, isn't really that efficient way of um, moving through the process and actually learning new things. So I think for Daystar, yeah, I would just like to see them, even if it doesn't work, at least try something new and, and continue to develop their strap book. Now, Dev, coming into this stage, we had a number of uh, debutants and, and most people on their team were kind of touting them as some of the best performers uh, in, you know, uh, it's going to sound weird to say, best performers in ranked, ranked stars. If you're talking you about in high call. You're just, am, you're just spelling it out. I'm, I'm, well, I'm not only filling it out, I'm... Uh, I'm stretching this out as long as I can go, but uh, and Heichel yeah. obviously coming into this stage, uh, very much an unknown factor, but Elevate was so confident that he was going to be the pickup, yeah. and it looks like he truly is. Yeah, and it's always a gamble. We see a lot of big rank stars or fresh 18-year-old players that uh, have really proven themselves in the non-competitive scene, and sometimes joining the comp scene is a huge challenge for them, and Heichel today... 12 kills, 4 deaths, 88% cost, I think it was. He was farming. Uh, this is the kind of game that he needs to play to get his confidence up. But I would actually put more stake in the experience that he will get out of games like the one yesterday against Fury, uh, Elevate Bleed, like all of the big teams, because that's when you not only like just get an ego boost from farming teams that are less organized than you, but you actually learn how to play for the win rather than how to play uh, for the style and the frags, which is typically how ranked is played more so. And I think that the real experience, obviously he's put on a good show today, the real experience is yet to come. Certainly is. Uh, we actually have Rando for an interview, uh, the coach for Elevate. Rando, uh, just before we get underway with the proceedings here, would you like to uh, let everyone at home know uh, who you are, where you've come from, and, and what you're doing with Elevate? Yeah, sure. Hi, good evening. Uh, yeah, so I'm Rando. I'm currently coaching Elevate. I uh, spent a few years in T2 in Europe, so I started in the Nordic scene and the very well-known Finnish scene, actually, and then uh, spent the better half of last year coaching a team that became known as Jihu, 
and uh, now I'm here. So. Yeah, it's a nice little journey. It's a consistent trend. We've uh, obviously already spoken to Shed, so we've got a little bit of insight uh, from uh, your previous year, if you will, in that focus. Mm -hmm. Coming into this stage, I do want to get an idea. What was your understanding of the Asia scene and and how it plays out? Did you did you know much about the uh, the teams and players? Obviously paid general attention to the region, and I think Fury and Bleed made big statements last year, so it was hard to miss uh, what was happening at the international events. Um, but obviously when we got the offer to come over here, uh, spent a lot of time researching the region, both in terms of like you know our league, but also the other leagues in APAC, so that we knew uh, what teams to practice and what teams to avoid, um, how to improve and how to build a team. So, uh, But I wouldn't say I was the most well-versed. Uh, even though I did live in APAC for a little while, but that's quite a long, long time ago now. <laughs> Dev. Can you give us a hint of that? I just want to hear. So you're from Norway, am I right? And you're living in Norway now, but you yeah, said right. you spent a bit of time in APAC. Yeah, I lived four years in Melbourne, actually. So. Hey! Um, oh, wow. What a homie! Aussie, yeah. <laughs> 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 so it's very nice to have an Aussie desk. You know, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so I actually, my question is kind of related, right? So you're in Norway, uh, and the theme mm. is all over APAC, but you know a lot of Singapore-centric mm. uh, kind of time zone, right? So what's it like actually yeah. working with them? Can you run a, like a day-to-day -day schedule by us, and so we can get an idea of like what the workflow is like? Yeah, I mean the time difference is actually brilliant for me because when you're coaching a team, you're usually doing midday to evening practice, um, but with the time difference. I get to get up early in the morning. I get to have evenings free. Uh, so for me, it's it's lovely. We practice in more or less every day. We're currently a little restricted on time, but um, as of, I believe, tomorrow, uh, Speak Easy is being uh, fully uh, available after having served national service for two years. So we're very excited about that. Um, so we'll be moving into more of a full-time schedule. Um, so it's a lot of, you know, because we're an early team, we're basically building from scratch. We are focused a lot on team activity, synergy, chemistry. We're very aware that right now, discipline is not going to be at the highest level, um, which you could probably see yesterday, um, which was on full display yesterday. Um, but yeah, we're working really hard. We know we're kind of starting from behind. Some of the, well, the best teams in our region right now have been together for much longer than us. We have about seven weeks together. So every day, every practice day, every day we're playing officials, every win, every loss, is incredibly valuable to us so that we can learn, review, and then hopefully convert that into better play the next play days and as we go along into the year. That's awesome. My question for you is as the coach and having such a new team, we don't know the structure of the team that much. They've only been introduced into the league this year. What as a coach is your vision for the structure of the team? We don't really understand who's who's leading the team. Is there people that are more talkative, more energetic or more quiet? What kind of traits are you sort of instilling into these players as the coach? And what do you see as the team vision? Yeah, so when we built the roster, we wanted vocality and we wanted multiple players to be able to call and have leadership. So Alex uh, Shed, he does a lot of like big picture calling for us on attack. So he's mm. been playing and IGLing the <clears throat> very famous split theory for, for quite a while. So he's been bringing that in. Then we have uh, Martin, Speakeasy, and Ape. We're calling a lot of the shots in terms of aggressive plays, playmaking adaptations, both on attack and defense. And then we let the uh, the young gunner frag like he did today, Haika. Um, but he's also, I think, so one of the things I was quite surprised by when I came over was how vocal Haika can be. Uh, so it's been really awesome to work with a vocal young talent. Um, and every day that we, you know, spend together, uh, he gets more vocal. Uh, Chow, uh, MC, gets more vocal. But they, we, we have uh, Martin, so speak easy, and Chow, um, which is MC, playing these technical roles for us. So it means that they're working areas in the map. They're playing maybe not the most fun operators and the most fun guns. There's a lot of Cade. Um, and a lot of castle being played the from them, jobs. but the tough <laughs> jobs, um, but yeah. very, very valuable for us. So yeah. that's kind of the overall structure, but, but we do run a system where everyone should be able to call, bring ideas on days where we don't do that. For instance, on days where we have low energy referencing yesterday, we struggle a lot more. So, you know, clarifying yesterday, very useful experience. 
you know, not very fun to get um, pooped on like we did, but <laughs> for us, very valuable to learn from. So. Yeah, that's actually the the final question that I had. Uh, you were speaking about, you know, how vocal some of these players are becoming, how vocal in high call is. Uh, we saw it today in the player cams, obviously. A lot of camera punching, a lot of up and downs. It was <laughs> it was great to see, obviously, yeah. you know, Elevate starting to, to build that momentum a little bit, even if it is an easier game. It's why we haven't prefaced this game at all. But yesterday, I'm, I'm not going to dwell on it too long, but I do want to know, what is the key takeaway in a game like that for you guys? What are you taking from that and moving forward with it? Are you just completely forgetting about it or are you bringing those key factors into, you know, future play days? Yeah. Good question. No, we don't forget about it. We instantly review the match afterwards. Um, and I think what we learned and what we didn't do well yesterday was we did not manage um, our own energy and our own focus particularly well going into the match. There were some delays, which isn't an excuse, but we did not do a good enough job to be dialed in. And we actually had the same issue against Delida last week. So we starting off on the wrong foot in two matches. Today we did not. We did a much better job at being ready to play. Um, yep. So... That was one of the key takeaways for us. We were too timid because we did not have the right energy. And then we look like crap. You know, if you're making plays and trying to go for things uh, and you're timid or you're under communicating, then things will look discord, like just poor coordination. And, you know, yeah. it looks a lot worse than, than the intention. So we had a lot of valuable takeaways from yesterday. We were not mentally destroyed. We're in group stages. Every day is, yeah. a, is a new day for us and we can learn. And like the guys concluded yesterday, much better to have such a tough, you know, one-sided match uh, in group stages than in playoffs when we're in best of threes. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely it, right? Get them away nice and early and then get prepared, strap up for what will be a uh, massive, yeah. massive playoffs uh, format. Look, uh, finally, anything you'd like to say? We always give everyone the floor before we let them go. No, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for the support from the viewers um there's an elevate jersey behind me uh that's available there's a uh, elevate skin there's a mav skin there's a vector skin there's a ak skin so um you know tap up your uh, your in-game uh, cosmetics a bit if you want and uh yeah we'll be working hard to be able to perform like this next week as well so i'm looking forward to seeing you guys then Redo, it was lovely to meet you my friend and hopefully we speak to you again uh, take care thanks you too guys well, that is a very well-spoken interview, if I might add. In fact, that might actually be... I've been doing interviews for, what, four years now, I think, on online shows. That is by far some of the most information we've got out of it and, and probably the most well-spoken interviewee we've had. So uh, massive credit to Rando. And, Dev, it's very, very clear that this roster, this team, is incredibly self-aware. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say about Rando. I mean, that's what you get when you spend three years in Melbourne, right? Like you just become incredibly well spoken, <laughs> just a fantastic individual all around. No bias here. Speaking of fantastic individuals, how about in Heikel, right? He farmed completely. We talked about him a little bit before the break, well, before the interview rather, and yeah, just 12 kills, absolutely farming today. Four multi kills is huge. Uh, yeah, like you said, Rob, I think Elevate, this is uh, a huge uh, win for them, uh, even though it is against one of the weaker teams in the league. Uh, just needing to bounce back from Fury was uh, absolutely essential. And I think they've really nailed that. They've hit massive stride of confidence. And as Rando said, it, it seems only been together for, what, seven weeks? So we do have a lot of history of Elevate stats, right? But really, the only the last three games actually are relevant to this roster. And uh, they've got quite a few more games to go. And then the oh-so-important playoffs. The playoffs are going to be absolutely massive. That's the the biggest focus for all of these teams moving forward. And I think that, you know, it's very clear to see that a lot of these teams are being spearheaded by people who have very clear visions and understand what they want to achieve. But guess what? It's time for us to go to a break. We'll be back after this with more Asia League.